Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to apply the Fair Value True PL instrument on an equity investment on a listed stock exchange. All right. So let's quickly define what a fair value is. This is the price that would be received to sell an asset or be paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants and the measurement date. So we'll have a trading information for XYZ company that operates in an ICT sector, provides telecommunication services. The entity is listed on the premium board of the exchange with a market cap of $5 billion and standing shares of 20 million shares. Your company has bought shares of this company and we have four scenarios to analyze what this means for you as an accountant reporting on these stocks and the accounting implication. All right. So the first scenario is when your company buys into the stocks of XYZ Limited. Second scenario would be the valuation of this stock at the reporting date. The third scenario would be where there's a disposal. How do you account for the disposal and the realized gain on disposal or sale of those shares? And the fourth scenario would be when you revalue the outstanding or the remaining outstanding shares at the valuation date. All right. So these four scenarios put together will help us understand how fair value true PNL works for equity investments and the accounting entries to pass at each point in time. The first scenario is the buy scenario where your company has bought the shares of SYC Limited. So the trade date for this transaction was on the 5th of March 2023 and the settlement date which is T plus 2 of on the 7th of March 2023. The volume of shares or number of shares bought by your company is 1,000 shares of SYC Limited at a share price of $201 and you have the transaction cost paid. In this situation, the broker's fee of $250.50. All right. So in this scenario, the amount to recognize as your financial asset favor to PNL on your balance sheet or statement of financial position is simply the shares bought multiplied by the share price of $201. Right. So this gives you $201,300. Then you have transaction cost paid, which you need to expense. All right, so you need to debit your expense by the uh, transaction cost that you paid of two fifty dollars. All right, so what goes out of your bank is the value of the investment you paid for plus your transaction cost, which is the sum of the two one thousand and the two fifty dollars. All right. So you're going to credit your bank with $201,550 and debit your investment of $201,300 and the transaction cost as expense of $250, okay? So this is what you do when you recognize the purchase of the investment. The next scenario is the valuation of this investment at the reporting date. So we've determined our reporting date to be the 31st of March, 2023. All right, so there have been no trans, no further transaction on these outstanding shares, which means there was no additional shares bought, nor any shares sold in the period. So we still have outstanding shares to be 1,000 shares, which was bought at the settlement date, 7th of March. So to determine the value as at the reporting date, is simply the share price as at the reporting date multiplied by your outstanding shares, which is equals to your share price of 1,000 shares multiplied by your price at the measurement date or reporting date, which is 221.40 cents. So you can see that the share price has appreciated from $201 to $221, okay? So mind you, what is our carrying amount as at the last valuation date? The last valuation date that we have in our, in our records is the date that the investment was purchased and the value of the assets in our books is the $201,300, all right? So I'll take this as the value of our assets, which is the current amount, all right? So the difference between the fair value as at the measurement date at the 1st of March, less the current amount will give us our fair value adjustment, which is equals to $221,400 minus $201,300. So you can see we have $20,100 as a fair value gain. Mind you, this gain is unrealized, all right? So the entries to pass to 
states are carrying amounts to fair value is to increase the value of the asset by the gain of twenty thousand dollars and recognize the gain in our PL by crediting fair value gain in the PL. All right, it's credit. This is scenario two. So move on to scenario three, where there's a sale or disposal of 500 shares from the outstanding 1,000 shares. All right. So on this date, the company entered into another trade to sell 500 shares. All right. And it took also T plus two to settle, which is on the 5th of April, 2023, and at a price of $267. Okay. So the proceed that you receive for this sale is simply the sales price of $267 multiplied by the shares that you're selling, which is a 500 shares. So this is what you get, $133,900. Then you need to also determine what is the cost of the 500 sh shares that you're selling. Recall that when we bought this 1,000 shares, it was bought at $201, all right? It was bought at $201.30. So that's the cost price. So the cost price or the cost amount will be equals to the cost price of $201 multiplied by the shares you're selling, which is 500 units of shares, okay? So we can see that the proceeds is greater than the cost amount of this unit that you're selling. So it's simply to get the realized gain or loss on this sale is equals to the proceed or the sales proceed less the cost amount. So in this situation, we have a realized gain because the asset has been sold and the gain realized. The entry to pass is to recognize the amount received as proceed in our bank. That means debiting the bank with $133,900. All right, then reducing the investment by the cost of investment that has been sold, which is $1,650,000. Okay, credit this. And of course, I recognize my gain on disposal, which is $33,000. Okay, so this balances out the journal entry. That's on third scenario. So now you are left with 500 outstanding shares for your company. And the next reporting date for valuation is on the 30th of April, 2023. And the share price has gone down to $198. All right, so what will be the fair value of the outstanding shares? To do that is to multiply the share price as at the reporting date, which is $198, multiplied by your outstanding shares of 500 units. This amount multiplied by 500 units, it gives us $99,000. All right. So, how do we then determine the current amount as I did the 1st of March? So, because we've sold 500 units from our standing shares, we have 500 outstanding as I report as at the next reporting date. So, to determine the current amount as at the 1st of March, is the price as at the last valuation date multiplied by your outstanding unit. So our last valuation date was on the 31st of March. All right, so take the price of $221, which is the price at the 31st of March, multiply by our outstanding unit of 500 units as at the next reporting date, which is 30th of April. Press the enter key. So to determine the fair value adjustment is simply to less the new fair value amount of 99,000 less 110,000. So we have a loss of $11,550. So because we've not made any sale or purchase, this fair value loss is unrealized, all right? So the account entries to pass is to simply reduce the value of our assets by the fair value loss and recognize the loss in your PL. Recognize the loss in the PL means you need to debit your fair value loss on the PL, debit adjustment, and then reduce the value of your asset by crediting financial assets fair value through PL in your balance sheet or statement of financial position. 
so we've come to the end of this video thank you for watching and see you in my next video bye